and welcome to Cooking with Jim 3. This will be the dumbest of this series. Yeah, it gets dumber. But anyway, my bro, he's a video gamer, okay? You know, video gamers are like a lot alike. We don't understand reality, right? We don't know how to cook basic things like hamburger, right? So, my buddy's like, how do you cook hamburger? I'm like, well, you can either barbecue it, I mean, put it on the uh, grill, you can put it on the stove, or you just pop it in the microwave. A lot of people are like, Jim, don't put chicken and like uh, beef in the microwave. I'm like, yeah, you can do it if you put it on long enough. You have to have a microwave that has like 1100 watts. Mine has about 1060, it's close enough. You know, I just, I just put it on for a little extra. But anyway, uh, beef is really good. Like, so, like, <laughs> that's why it's gonna be stupid. Beef is so good by itself, you literally don't have to put anything on it, except like Heinz ketchup. Okay, Heinz ketchup is it. This one's no sugar addict. I'm a diabetic, you know. The less sugar, the better. Actually, people don't understand it, but the less sugar anybody has, the better. Because <clears throat> sugar does you no good. American confection has a really huge problem. <clears throat> Everything's like basically sugar. You go like, I love Dunkin' Donuts, don't get me wrong. I don't eat there anymore, I can't. I'm diabetic, it'll kill me. But, uh, <clears throat> like it's like sugar coated with sugar on top of sugar. You go like, you know, you go, the little babushka ladies, oh my, they were great. They always make good cooking. Like, I do, like, as an Italian, I'm like, why do people like to go to Thai? A lot of people like to go like chi eat Chinese. Why do people like this new, like, Japanese restaurant? Why do people like eating German? And like, like, <laughs> like, all these fancy restaurants out there, oh my God, this food's so good. And I'm like, nah. It's the same reason why, like, when GoldenEye came out, I'm like, nah. Everyone's like, this is the greatest game ever. I'm like, nah. Because I was playing 32 player Quake. And they're playing four players and they can see each other's screen. I have had the superior. I grew up an Italian fan. Every meal we had is like a freaking like king's banquet. Like there's like, you know, yeah, like it was like it was like Easter or Thanksgiving. Maybe had turkey and ham, souffle, this and that. But the babushka ladies on top of like they're you know, they're awesome, uh like the freaking smorgasbord. You eat like a smorgasbord all the time. They would like have like coconut cream pie, which is amazing. I have an aunt right now, she has cancer, but she makes the most amazing coconut cream pie. Her name's Aunt Linda. Most amazing. Like, it's like, and sometimes she just puts it in like a, a, a fluff, like in like a bowl. Oh my God, it's so good. She makes pretzel salad, you know, the, the jello and, and, and strawberries. And oh my God, I'm talking about sugar. She's you know, gonna kill myself. Oh my God. But, uh, you know, on top of that, they, you know, we have raspberry squares. You know, go pick some raspberries, slap some gelatin in that stuff, coat it with like a layer of bread, like a like nice. T anyway. I'm, I'm Slovak, and uh, if you know, like, Slovak, Italian, I'm high 57. <laughs> Boom. You know, I, like, every name something I'm, I'm English, Danish, like, like, like uh, you know, everything I end up in European somewhere, you know. My, 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 my mom's maiden name's Samara, which, you know, Samaritans, that's the Middle East and stuff. So, like, I'm, like, all there in Europe, okay? So, uh, but where did that come? Oh, yeah, Slovak. So, um, I did Ancestry.com. They send your DNA. It was just freaking creepy. My mom, like, just pushed me. Like, here, let's send your DNA. So I knew everything about it. I'm like, okay, whatever. I mean, I don't care. I mean, like, it's, like, sketch. But, yeah, anyway, um, it's good we're doing filler because this is going to be the shortest cooking video in the history of the planet. So, this filler is actually important. You're like, when's Jim going to hit the cooking? You know, it's, it, 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 it's, like, this is, like, the type of experience, like, it's too fast. But, uh, long story short, Slovaks like... Savory, you know, savory is like like your gravies, like your meats, uh, like your cheeses. You know, slow. It's just our taste. Our taste. Like everybody has different tastes. You know, some people like different things. It just shows that some people are wrong. That's a joke. People can't wrong because of opinion. But there actually, you know what? There is opinion that is like actually fact, right? It's like, oh, it's just art, you know? Super Mario, like, oh, why can you say my video game is better and that guy's video game is better or that movie's better that movie's worse? It's all art. It's, it's, it's subjective. No, it's not. Like, Super Mario Brothers, the first one, is infinitely better than freaking, like, E.T. for Atari 600. You know, if people like the one game, a majority of people like the one game, but they don't like that one, then it's thing. It's not taste. It just means that one sucks and that one's better, right? So like, there's, there's, there's different between taste, there's objective taste, and there's subjective taste. And, like, subjectively, Slovaks don't like sugar. And I think that's part because we're sensitive to, like, getting diabetes sooner but anyway bring it back to the the bushka ladies and it's like oh you gotta try my new recipe you gotta try my jello you gotta try my sugar coat with sugar it's like oh my god there's too much sugar in american confection there's just too much sugar in american confection. i will say it again there is too much sugar in american confection like it's like it's like it's like as a rocker like when i'm playing the music i'm like yeah it's loud you know i'm playing it really loud you know 
You need to draw the stop sign. You know, everybody's bored of the stop sign. You want to rock out, make people like, hey, I'm a stop sign. There's a guy rocking here. They forget they're waiting, you know, at the stop line. You make their day better, right? You don't want to be jamming your rock music like down, like like uh, 11 p.m. down a rural area, like bam, 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 bam. And people are like, dude, I'm trying to sleep, right? There's time when you went loud. There's time when you went quiet. And like, American Fetch is always on loud. <laughs> Have the sugar. Rock on. Sugar. Pour some sugar on my food. Oh, bam, bam, bam. Let me deaf it up or we pour some sugar on our food. No, you don't put sugar. Chimanese, dude, they, don't people have like sen like sensitive taste buds? Why can't you just taste a little bit of sugar and be happy? Like, why does it always have to be like mountains of sugar coated with icing made of water and sugar with whipped cream on top and then sugar? Like, like ice, ice cream. Like, I'm, gee. like, I mean, I'm just going to say like, Anyway, so anyway, they push it on you really hard. And I'm, I'm not blaming the Bushka ladies for giving me diabetes, you know? But, like, it, it's just, like, American fashion, too much sugar. Okay, so we're too much sugar. So, like, when you buy your Heinz 57, it is worth getting no sugar added. We'll just, we'll just say, like, dollar pay dollar, whatever. That's best better. Heinz, Heinz has always been the best ketchup. I like that they don't sponsor, uh... I love, um, yeah, 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 let's get out of that political crap. But, um... Hold on, I just need to like, uh, so sometimes you're about to say something that like, you know, that's like sketch that everybody agrees with, and you're like, hey, just, just don't say it. You know, that's political, you know, you ever think about that? Like, how many people like out there have been in an argument where a family member is talking politics? How many? All of us. You'd be like talking, hey, you know what, uh, how's that Lakers and the Bulls game going on? And they'll be like, oh, Lakers, they're from California. And you're like, oh, shnike. Here it comes. You see, like, Californians are moving out. They're moving this. They're moving this and that. And then immigrants. And it's like, damn it, man. Like, come on. I'm just want to talk about basketball. I'm not even into basketball. I'm just giving an example. But you know what I'm saying? So what happens is there's triggers where you can trigger someone into politics. And you don't want to do that because they're hardwired from television to hate. You know, television, division, racism, sexism, ageism, uh, authoritarianism now. Free speech versus not free speech. You should say, you should say that. You can't say that. It's like, oh, look, God. They're saying, like, like, like I mean, like, before I get on, like, it's absurd, right? Like, what they're doing pushing. They know, like, a lot of it's lies. Like, like CNN will be like, don't be a racist. I'm like, yeah, great, good job, CNN. We don't want to be racist, right? Okay. And then, like, then they'll say, like, white Europeans are terrible. I'm like, well, like, dude, like, the frick, European Indian, like, you would think of the Google it. Like, they have European immigrants are the worst. It's like, you seen it. See, and you just said some racist shit, you know? Like, so, like, anyway. I love people of all races. They a couple of people of different races, you know? It's like, I don't care about that stuff. But the news wants to make you focus. They want the vision. Like they say, okay, I want to be, like, this is before we go, I want to close the politics. This, this is here for your mental. This is here to keep you, 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 you from arguing with your family members. You don't want to lose family members. There's bridges you want to burn. There's bridges you don't want to burn. Uh, Kenny Rogers, you know when to hold them, know when to fold them. You know, when the loved ones get on your case about something that they, is someone else's, like, nonsense that they're pushing on TV, you don't want, you don't want to lose your friendship because they're, like, they're being an idiot. Okay? And you don't want to, you don't, you don't want to do it. Okay? So, um... So I'm going to say in politics, in politics, politics, okay? You don't have to answer them at all. You can just listen to them. Oh, what do you think about that? I'm, I'm listening. What do you think? What, 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 do you have an opinion? I'm still processing what you said. I'm, I like to hear I value as a friend or a family member, and I like to hear what you have to say. And I'm listening. And I, 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 uh, for an opinion, I have to have a full picture of the situation, right? And then right there, you're like, you're not like calling misinformation. Sometimes when you call misinformation, oh, you're misinformation. No, you're misinformation, okay? Um, universal, there's a universal constant. You don't have to pull this out. Okay, don't pull this out. This is just the universal constant before going. And misinformation, the party who pushes the misinformation is 100% the ones for censorship and against free speech. You can process it in your own time, uh, but there is one party pushing uh, anti-free speech and, you know, we, but we had the... Uh, Ministry of Truth, you know, they tried to they tried to remove free speech uh, this year. So, um, but that the part, people trying to remove free speech censorship always a part of misinformation. But you don't want to argue that because like it's because of argue. Oh, you're misinformation, misinformation. It becomes heated. You can't talk logic when someone's like blah blah blah. blah I'm arguing. I'm like I'm in an I'm in a, uh, emotional state. And like you're like, dude, you can't you can't logic and emotion don't go together. That's why you had Spock, man. Like me do Spock, Spock. So this is the old Hebrew blessing. It's like, bless you. God bless you guys out in there in the cooking land. Like I said, I have to extend this video because this video is going to be literally like five seconds long. I mean, like, 
figuratively, literally, figuratively, figuratively, literally, five seconds long. But uh, but I mean, it's a good talk. Anyway, uh, we'll talk about Spock. Uh, and, and, so well, you can't talk logic when someone's arguing emotionally, and you're gonna try, and that's why it makes people more arguing because they're like their their emotional brain doesn't function, you know. And they're taught to be emotional, you know. They're taught to do one-liners and hate, and this guy's bad because of this, 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 this. It's like it's not a person's bad; it's their policy. It's like, in, in, like you know, supply and demand and all that stuff. But you don't want to argue that, you know. Like you, you could be the most logical person. You think they're nonsense, blah 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 blah, but you let them talk. Because when you let them talk, all you're doing is absorbing some sort of hate. Okay, it's like Jesus, man. Jesus was hated a lot. He never hated back. He's like, okay, thanks for hating me, man. Good to hear you're venting about how bad I did your, you know, your porch. And, you know, I, I, I worked on that porch pretty well. And, you know, uh, I've made porches before. Everybody was else is happy. And, you know, on top of that, I'm God. So I know this porch is good. But, you know, you're saying my porch is crap and you want to pay me less? Whatever, pay me less. Uh, see. And then, like, you know, like Jesus was hated a lot, a lot of times, you know. And uh, that's what we should be. We, we, uh, let's, uh, we're going to say Martin Luther King said, uh, darkness does not drive out darkness. Only light does that. Um. Hate does not drive out hate, only love does that, right? So if someone hates you, punches you, or like shoves you or something, and you shove them back a punch you, it's just gonna escalate. It's gonna it's gonna turn into like a hate fire. And then it burn your community, it comes back, burns you. Hate leads to pain, love leads to pleasure, pick the first what do you want? Pain or pleasure? You know, if you want, you want pain, hate. No one wants pain. Let's say they do, you know, because they're in a bad mood. But everybody loves pleasure. You know, everybody loves pleasure. You always love people around you. You know, that's what we're doing here. So, uh, in order to love, you know, you take if someone with stock politics. You know, they're hating. They're basically hating you at this point. Uh, blah 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 blah. Why you doing? They, they 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 make assumptions. Like I've had I've had people jump me about Trump. Like like I didn't vote for him in 2016. I didn't know he was a good guy uh, or a bad guy. And uh, but like when I knew he got impeached and uh, well, they wanted to impeach when he got inaugurated. So I'm like. That's kind of weird, right? He did nothing, and they wanted to peach. So I was like, maybe, maybe this is some propaganda going on. But like, yeah, I don't know. Fuck the frick politics, you know? I just, like I said, I did, like, I got jumped about Trump, but I didn't even vote for the guy, right? So, like, people want to jump about you, you know? It's like, so when they jump you, and they start, they, like, they're, they're basically offensively offending you, you don't be offended, man. They're, they're friends. You're a family. They're just, they're just being, like, television-induced uh, stupidity. And you're like, okay, dude, you know? So they can talk for like an hour or two. And you're sitting there, okay. And the best part about this, okay, this is this, this is where I get you. The, this is going to be healing. This is how you heal your family. They talk for two hours, and they say something really, really dumb, okay? One thing is really dumb. You pull one string. You only say one thing. Then in their brain, the next day, they can only think about that one thing you talked about. And it's unraveling the dumbest thing they said. So they're like a, they're like a jar of, like, knots. And you're pulling one string. Your family member, you're going to see them, like, for years from now on. So if you pull one string a day, they'll be untangled within a week or two, you know? And then and then, and then when they come talk to you, they'll think you're a wise man instead of a, an argument of fool, okay? So, like, let's say, let's say the blah, 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 blah. They're like, uh, uh, this issue, this issue, this issue. And I'm glad we banned the pipeline and we stopped pumping gas, uh, stopped harvesting oil. And see, what do you think about that? Oh, uh, you know. In university, they talk about supply and demand. You know, a farmer doesn't like harvest his crops. You know, he doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't get crops, right? And they'll be like, "Oh yeah," you know. And they'll be like, "If you don't harvest oil, you don't have oil." And they're like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." And if we don't have oil, you don't have gas, right? And they're like, "Yeah, yeah." So the gas prices go up whenever you don't harvest oil out of uh, Alaska, uh, the Gulf, and transport it. And they're like, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah." And it's like, you know, well, you know, well, well, there is some semblance of greed, you know, in American capitalism, and in, in the top dogs, there may be not the best people sometimes. And like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, but, but like, at the same time, like, you go back, what, Iran and China just executes peaceful people, you know, for their organs. Because there's like, a, there's a black market of organs that's very valuable. So they look at peaceful uh, as uh, disposable, like, uh, money. If they don't like you, they're just gonna, you know, they get, they get paid to get rid of you. And it's population control. So like, grain almost, actually. And they're like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So like, you know, the, the, the foreign oil companies are like worse than American. And like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, they're, they're, they're like, oh, okay, yeah. So like we should be harvesting, you know? Oh yeah, yeah, we should be pumping. And like, like, yeah, okay. And then, then you go, then again, you just listen to the rest they say. And then for the next day, you know, or days, they're like, you know what? That one point, they, you know, they were wrong. They should have, they should have been harvesting. Okay. So that's how you untangle your friends and family. You gave them honor by listening to them. Honor, they're hating you, but you're loving them by listening to them. And then when you untangle one thing, you're loving them by untangling. And then get on your case about the one thing you're tangled. Just let them talk. It's a really, it's an important life skill. Here. It's an important life skill to let people hate on you. It sucks, but it's what Jesus did. And when you hate, let people hate on you, it promotes love. 
you know. I obviously don't want, you know, you don't want physical hurts, you know. You don't want to sit in a, a relationship that's chronically hurting you. You know, get out of that. You know, chronic. But if it's, if it's a friend or family, it's always been cool. And then they, they get this really talking point off of, like, CNN, NPR, or some other bull BS, like, news news media station just trying to push division and hate, right? You just ignore them, right? You know I mean? And before we move on, this is just to keep your head, okay? Before we move on, if you have 100, say, say you have, like, 50, you have 50, you have a nation of 50 people, right? And you have to fight a nation of 100 people. How do you win that? You divide them into 10 groups of 10, you know? Ageism, okay? No, that's half, that's 50. You get sexism, half, that's 25. Uh, race, I mean, sexism, racism, ageism. You know, they, they made boomer, they thought that was a funny term, right? Uh, when it first came out, when the first boomer came out on social media, I, I called him out, that's ageism, that's, that's a hate term. It's not funny. Do you know every single person I said that to? Well, basically, every like 80% of the people I said that to, they deleted their account. It was a bot account. They're just, they're just trying to push. They're trying to push propaganda to change society. Now everybody thinks boomers funny. Oh, you're a boomer, Jim. You're a boomer. It's like, dude, I was too young to be Gen X. You know. Now you're calling me too old to be Gen X. Like, it's, the, the the generational terms are nonsense. They're there to push division. You know. I call myself the arcade generation because like I play a lot of video games. People say I'm, the, you know, say I play more than basically everybody. Mm, but anyway, anyway, like long story short, don't let them divide you. You know, you divide. You want you get down to like, you know, you divide them down in the groups of ten, and fifty takes them all. You know, so that, that's what they're, they're trying to divide America. The United States stands divide. We fall. We all know that. Who cares? Who cares? Let's get to cooking. All right. So we're good. Boom. We got this. Is like the real shortest cooking video and the dumbest. We're gonna microwave beef. Okay. So this is for the show. This is my buddy. I play video games with called uh, Mike Moore. Uh, yeah, he's not the Michael Moore that made like uh, what's it called? Uh, they invade Canada. What's it? Canadian bacon, right? And more cooking information. But uh, yeah, that's a good show. Um, my favorite part about Canadian bacon when they get pulled over by Dan Aykroyd. You should watch Canadian bacon. It's, it's a little bit slow. It's not the best 80s movies, but 80s movies are it's far superior to what we got now. And you, it's probably like it would be a banger to, to watch at this point. Uh, I was watching Ghostbusters on the uh, on the thing yesterday. Right now, I'm, pull, I'm like just cutting the meat, make sure I don't get cut. This is really easy. You open, open the package from Walmart. You know, where they put like a, what's it called? Um... It's since like about 20 years ago, they've been starting to study what's it called, like uh, anti-theft packaging, so people don't open it up in the store. I don't think anybody would want to open up ground beef in the store. That's freaking disgusting. But, uh, but like you know, like, like how hard is to open stuff anymore? You almost have like a package opener, you know. But anyway, we're just this is like pretty beautiful. We're just putting ground beef in a bowl. So the show, this is not difficult. This is like easiest thing to do. And the, like normally, what you want to do here is you want to put some garlic powder and some onion powder. Some people like egg. I don't like egg, but you like egg. You put egg in here, and you just um, then you just put you just put it in the microwave for like eight minutes on eighty percent or something or whatever. You know, everybody has different microwave power. You have to know your own power of the microwave. You gotta know your own power, right? So this is stupid. Like quite literally, this is a stupid cooking video. Um, this is part from the lead up. Now, I'm gonna be back in a second. I'll put it away. Let me get myself. Uh, Alright, so, here we are. Rocky like a hurricane. So, got my knife, I got this. And the only thing you really, the only thing that's scientific about to make it cook better, you need to like separate it some. There. Wow, congratulations. Cooking video. You just put ground beef in the microwave and uh, they put some air holes in that thing. Oh yeah, we stab in the, stab in the meat. A stab in the meat. Alright, um, I get fancy. I put some salt in it. Like I said, I don't have garlic salt or uh, garlic powder, which is nice because, like, talking about it, I'll go out and get it the next time. Just put some salt on there. It's nothing to do. And then, really, all you really need is ketchup. I'm going to try some Worcestershire. Like, this is just, this is just an attempt. Their attempt has been made. It just couldn't hurt to put a little. The Worcestershire is made for steak. Couldn't hurt to put a little bit of the dab in that. And, like, straight to show, this is the easiest thing ever. I take this, put it in the microwave for, like, eight minutes on 80. Bingo, bango. Then I just pour ketchup on and eat. It's not rocket science. This is the world's dumbest cooking video. Thank you for watching the world's dumbest cooking video. What's your problem? Why are you watching the dumb videos? God bless, man. Hope you have good family stuff. Don't let people argue with you. I mean, like, people argue with you, don't don't argue back, you know? It's not, it's not worth losing family over, like, idiots, corrupt politicians.